Oh, wow. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what a group. And we have 12,000 people outside that still can in. We're going to get them out on the runway. We'll put them out on the runway. We have 12,000 people outside. It's incredible. They're coming in. Look at this. Oh, we are going to win Florida so big. It'll be amazing. This is a movement like they have never seen before. Never. Last night was very exciting, and almost every single poll had us winning the debate against crooked Hillary Clinton. Big league. Big league. She is as crooked as they come. And I'll tell you what, check out, we put them out today, almost every poll. So that was an exciting evening for me, folks. That was an exciting evening. And, and it set the all-time record for debates and maybe television, who knows. Look at this crowd, look at this. This is amazing. Unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, is there any place more fun or safer to be than at a Trump rally, right? Right? We're going to take on the special interests, the lobbyists, and the corrupt corporate media right back there. They are corrupt as you can get. You know, the single weapon that Hillary Clinton has, I mean, she couldn't even pass her bar exam in Washington, D.C. She failed it. The single weapon that she's got is the media. Without the mainstream media, she wouldn't even be here, folks. That I can tell you. She wouldn't even be here. She wouldn't have a chance. So we're going to create a new government that serves you, your family, and your country, and it's going to be the kind of government that you've been looking for for a long time. You know, I was in the plane, and I came in, and we said, wow, but we do have these crowds elsewhere. But they said, the fire marshal closed us down, won't let 12,000 people in. But then when I looked at this, I said, now I understand. Where's the fire marshal? Fire marshal, let him in, please, okay? Let him in. Let him in, fire marshal. Let him in. Our country is filled with so many amazing people, people who lift us up and inspire us. And by the way, I have one of them here. Where's Rudy Giuliani? Rudy! Rudy! We love Rudy. Look at him. Look at him. a good man. We lost one great person in a heartbreaking accident on Sunday, Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez, and he was some pitcher. He died at the age of 24. I just spoke to Jeff, the owner of the team, who is heartbroken. It's a huge loss for the state, for the entire sport of baseball. And for all of the Americans who are so inspired watching him play at 24, just about as good a pitcher as there ever was that age. So we send our deepest condolences to his wife and family during this very painful time. Our country 
also lost one of our truly great American icons, the king, the king, Arnold Palmer. I was always very proud to call Arnold my friend. He was a truly great man. His legendary accomplishments on the course are well known. His fearless style of play, his love of the fans, and his working class charm made him an icon to legions of Americans. His accomplishment off the field was probably even greater, including his charity work and all of the thousands of lives that he's made better. Arnie was a symbol for America, and he will be sorely missed. Our thoughts also are with his loved ones. Ours is truly a special country, and we must never stop fighting to keep the American dream alive. Never. Never. Unfortunately for too many Americans, the American dream is now out of reach. It's not working. Our country isn't working. So many things are going wrong. Last night, when I debated Secretary Clinton on America's future, For 90 minutes, I watched her very carefully, and I was also holding back. I didn't want to do anything to embarrass her, but I watched her, and she was stuck in the past. For 90 minutes, on issue after issue, Hillary Clinton defended the terrible status quo while I laid out our plan, all of us together, to bring jobs security, and prosperity back to the American people. For 90 minutes, she argued against change while I called for dramatic change. We have to have dramatic change. We have to get rid of Obamacare. We have to strengthen up our depleted military. It's in such bad shape. We're going to do a lot of great things, folks. November 8th, you have to get out there and vote. You know, you've seen all the polls. And if you look, I don't just mean the debating polls. Those were things of beauty. One after one. Time magazine. Places don't even like me, although I have been on the cover of Time a hell of a lot lately, I will say this. But Drudge. Drudge is, first of all, he's a fantastic guy, but Drudge, it was 80 to 20 percent. Trump, 80 to 20. But more importantly, when you look at the different polls, we're up two nationally in CNN. Most importantly, you look at the states. We're leading in Florida. We're leading in Ohio. We're leading in Iowa by a lot. We're leading in North Carolina. We have states that don't normally think in terms of Republican, which is us. It's us. Don't call us anything. It's just us. You know what it means. It means common sense. It means bringing civility back to our country. It means law and order and protecting our police and being very careful with everybody else. But I watched last night. I found it so interesting. I knew I was going into a situation where you were going to have one of the largest audiences in the history of television. And I took a deep breath and I pretended I was talking to my family. It's very interesting.
You just block it out. Very interesting. And she was talking about what she's going to do to get rid of ISIS, what she was going to do on child care, what she was going to do on all these different things. And I kept saying, for 26 years, you've been doing nothing. Nothing. For 26 years, she's done nothing. You know, when she ran for the Senate in New York, New York was having a big problem keeping jobs because her husband signed NAFTA. And NAFTA was draining the jobs out of our country, going to Mexico and other places, but NAFTA was a disaster. Probably the worst trade deal ever signed by anybody anywhere in the world, okay? NAFTA was a disaster. She promised, running for the Senate years ago, 200,000 jobs for upstate New York. It was a disaster. Not only didn't they come, but they lost so many jobs, and you have to see it now. It's so sad when you see what's happened to upstate New York. It is a disaster. The companies have left and gone to Mexico and other places. The jobless situation is horrible. And she said she was going to do something about it. And the day after the election, it was like, bye-bye. And that's exactly what would happen if she ever won. Ooh. Folks, we can't let that happen. We know her too well. We know her too well. She's the candidate of yesterday, and ours is the campaign, and we're the people of the future. <laughs> Hillary Clinton defended every major failure that she helped to create. She defended the Iran deal, one of the worst deals ever. She defended her role in unleashing ISIS. She is responsible, along with Barack Obama, they created a vacuum by getting out of Iraq, which they should have never been in in the first place. And does everybody believe me? I was against going into Iraq. And it's so well documented. And Sean Hannity is now saying he was absolutely against it. And nobody wants to call him because they don't want to hear that. But she defended the conditions of our inner cities where African-American families are living in a situation that nobody should be forced to live in. And what's happened is government led by Democrats should be ashamed of themselves. I explained how she's been there for 30 years and hasn't fixed anything. It's all talk, no action, typical politician. In fact, her only experience has been a failure. Look at everything she's touched has been failure, just about one failure after another after another. She bragged about how she traveled all over the world. And that's true. She traveled all over the world. And you know what it got us? Nothing. Nothing. It got us debt, and it's got us death. We have death and debt and unemployment. We have all bad things. And I said last night, I said, you know, Secretary, you are experienced, but it's bad experience because everything you did turned out bad. The price tag in the Middle East has been $6 trillion. We could have rebuilt our country two times over and maybe more than that. Iraq, Libya are in chaos. Iran is on the path to nuclear weapons. All they have to do is sit back for nine more years and they're going to have all the nuclear weapons they want. How stupid a deal is that? How about the $400 million in cash that they shipped, right? How about that? And then that turned out to be wrong. It turned out to be wrong. It was $1.7 billion in cash. Who ever heard of this? Radical Islamic terrorism is spreading everywhere. It's spreading everywhere. We have a president 
who won't even issue the term. We have a former Secretary of State who doesn't want to mention the term. They're allowing people to come into our country by the thousands and thousands and thousands. And we don't even know who the hell they are. You watch. You watch. Here in America, we've seen one Islamic terror attack after another. We've seen the horrors visited upon Orlando with the attack on the Pulse nightclub, the worst mass shooting and the worst attack ever on the LGBTQ community in our history, the worst in our history. We've seen the recent terrorism in New York, New Jersey, Minnesota, San Bernardino. Before that, I mean, these attacks are going on endlessly all over the world, not just in our country. And they're made possible by our extremely open, in our country, immigration system that's fostered by a president that doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And by a woman that I think is virtually incompetent, certainly as a Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. I mean, she is virtually incompetent. Yet Hillary Clinton wants a 550% increase in Syrian refugees and would bring in, think of that. Think of that. Hey, folks, folks, listen. We got to make our country great again. We can't do it this way. We can't do it this way. Can't do it. And that's 550% above Obama's already high numbers. Something funny happened. You know, the dishonest press. Look at these guys. The dishonest press. And by the way, by the way, they're not showing this crowd. I go home, my wife said, how was the crowd? I go, it was massive. You didn't see, no, they always keep it right on your face. That's the only good thing about a protester. They always like to show protesters. But we don't have too many protesters. You know why? You know why? Because the Bernie protesters had spirit. And the Hillary protesters have absolutely no spirit. They're like. It's true. But the 550% is over and above, over and above, the thousands and thousands of people coming in from Obama. She wants 550% more. And I used to say 500%. And the press called me out. They said, he's wrong. It's not 500%. I said, uh-oh, here we go. You know, here we go. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Was it a lie? You know the lie. They tell lies, you wouldn't believe it. When you want to prove something, you give them a paragraph and they'll put in a half a sentence and they'll say, oh, well, that's not correct. So they said, it's wrong, 500%. And I said, well, what's the number? Well, it's 550%. I said, that's the first time that ever happened to me. She wants 550% more. Overseas, Russia and China, and certainly when you look at what's going on with Iran, with the circling our ships, with flying near our planes, with grabbing our 10 sailors. Remember that not so long ago? They're all emboldened. Here we are with Iran. We give them all of this money back, 150 billion. We give them a billion seven in cash, which you can't even imagine what that looks like. And they hate us. They're emboldened because they know they're dealing with stupid leadership, folks. They know they're dealing with very stupid people. North Korea is more dangerous and defiant than ever. Syria, another catastrophe on Clinton's watch, is in ruins. And only five of the 28 member NATO countries are meeting their minimum defense spending requirement. Remember when I said, I like NATO, but you gotta, get, you gotta pay your bills. You got to pay your bills. You remember that? 
And then they said, oh, Trump doesn't like NATO. NATO's fine. But I said two things. It's obsolete because it has to take care of terror. And all of a sudden, they announced they're doing a new division on terror. Front page of the Wall Street Journal a few months ago. And I tell you, I don't want to... I don't want to be in a position where they say, isn't it terrible what he said? If I don't say that, believe me, NATO is not opening up a terror operation. Let's see how that one works. But I also said it's obsolete for that reason. I said they're not paying their bills. They've got to pay their bills. They want us to defend them, and that's fine. They've got to pay their bills. And they can afford, most of them, to pay their bills. So right now we have five of 28 paying what they're supposed to be paying. How stupid are we? How stupid are we? And we love NATO, and we'll protect, and we'll live with NATO, but they have to help us also. You know, these deals, these bad deals that we make, they are a two-way street. You do know that. Like the deals with Mexico. It's a one-way highway right into Mexico with our jobs and our money. I always say, we get the drugs, they get the money. Not anymore, folks. Not anymore. Not anymore, folks. <laughs> we will build the wall 100%. We need the wall. 100%. Are you ready? Are you ready? And who is going to pay for the wall? They may not know it yet, but the answer is Mexico. So, it's one Clinton failure after another. What has Hillary Clinton accomplished for your family in the last 26 years that she's been doing this? Nothing, nothing. Neg very negative things. It's been 30 years of disappointments on foreign policy, on domestic policy, on helping women, on helping children. She's done nothing. She had, in the Senate, she had a couple of name bills. She named a post office. I think she named a road. She named something. She did nothing. She was terrible. The only thing she succeeded at is helping her donors and covering up her crimes. That's what she succeeded at. In fact, Her single greatest achievement, in my opinion, will go down as getting away with the horrible crime that she committed with her classified information and her phony email and her illegal servers and getting away with that when nobody else has and lives have been destroyed. Let's see what happens. Last night, I talked about how we have the worst so-called recovery since the Great Depression. You know that, right? The worst recovery. I laid out detailed, specific plans for a new direction. The American people rendered their verdict. The post-debate polls, as I said to you, were so great. But we exposed Hillary Clinton's real position on NAFTA, which is, by the way, the single worst deal you'll ever see, and Trans-Pacific Partnership, another disaster that she lied about. She lied about, and they even finally said that she lied. I couldn't believe it. She called it the gold standard, and she would certainly approve it, routinely approve it, 
Her allies say that she will approve it if she ever gets in, and I'll tell you what, it will be a disaster for Florida and Pennsylvania and Ohio and every other place. It will be a disaster, and you can't allow TPP to happen. It will be a catastrophe. Nothing will be as bad as NAFTA, but this one will be close. A vote for Hillary Clinton is a vote for TPP and the destruction and continued destruction of America jobs. America's jobs are in deep trouble. Companies are moving all the time. As we stand here, companies are negotiating to leave our country and fire their longtime workers. If I become president, don't worry about it, folks. That's not going to be happening. Not going to be happening. And if a company wants to go and wants to fire all of their workers and move their plant to Mexico or some other place, and they make something, when they make that something and they want to get it over our now very, very strong, powerful border, the only way it's getting over that border, folks, is if they pay a nice, hefty tax. And when they know that, they're not leaving. When they know that, because that upsets the apple cart, they will not be leaving, believe me. And you know what? For the 2% of the companies that do leave, if it would even be that much, for the companies that leave, that's okay too, because we'll make as a country a hell of a lot of money as they pay that tax. But they're not going to leave. They're not going to leave. So just remember, and you know some politician told me the other day, you know, Don, I've been doing this for five years, and nobody ever told me about that. How simple is it? How simple is it? I said, you never thought of it? We never thought in terms, you ever see where they want to give low interest loans to the, they don't need the money. They want to give them low interest loans. They want to do all sorts of things. They don't need it. You tell them, you want to leave our country. You want to take these people, fire all the workers, move to another country. You think you're going to make your product and just sell it back to us? Not going to happen that way anymore. Not going to happen. Now, And the nice part is, other than the small donor and a few people, relatively speaking, I'm funding my own campaign. I'm in this thing for a lot of money. I spent a lot of money. But the nice part is, I'm not like Hillary with the hedge fund guys all over the place and all these guys that will have total control of what she's doing. I'm working for you folks. I mean, it could be who the hell knows what's going to happen. But November 8th is a big day. It's a big day. And today, we had something where I understand, through largely small donors and some others, we had the biggest day we've ever had because of the success last night of the debate. They raised almost $18 million today. Can you believe it? $18 million. Amazing. It's a lot. $18 million in one day, think of that. And that was largely because of last night. I explained, you know the nice part? When they come to see me because they want to move a company to Mexico and they can't get approval, and they'll call and call, and the lobbyists will call and call, I may take their call, but I guarantee you they're going to get nothing, folks. They're going to get nothing. They're getting nothing. They're going to stay in our country. We're going to keep our jobs. We're giving massive, as you know, tax reductions, massive. Hillary Clinton is raising taxes big league. We're lowering taxes big league. And that's the way it is. So, and I explained last night Hillary's support for these massive tax hikes that she's giving. And they are massive, $1.3 trillion dollars. And she wants more regulations, which will further destroy the jobs. Our regulatory situation is ridiculous. Our regulations are killing our companies and killing our jobs. Another topic I raised was the issue of debt. It took 233 years for the United States to rack up the first $10 trillion of debt. Trillion. Think of that word. Trillion. President Obama doubled the debt in less than eight years. Congratulations. And as I said last night, 
What do we have to show for it? Our infrastructure is crumbling. Our schools are failing. Our jobs are leaving. And think of it. Think of it. It's one thing we have too much debt. But at least it would be nice to have beautiful new highways, beautiful new roads, new bridges, new tunnels, new schools. We have everything. We haven't done anything. We've doubled our debt, and our country's a mess. Our airports are third world. Our airports, think of it, LaGuardia, LAX, Newark, Kennedy. These are third world airports. You take a look at these airports. So we doubled our debt. And our country's a mess. We're going to fix our country, okay? We're going to fix our country. I talked about the corruption and the incompetence of government, including giving citizenship to as many as 1,800 high-risk immigrants who should have been deported. You saw that last week. They had 800 people that were going to be deported. They were in line to be deported. Now, you got to be pretty bad to be deported from our country, right? They made a mistake or were corrupt. You know, nobody ever says that. And guess what happened to the 800 people? They became citizens. They became citizens. Is anybody in this magnificent room with 25,000 people, is anybody here that was one of those 800 people? Raise your hand. They became citizens. Okay. Then they said they made a mistake. They made a mistake. It wasn't 800. It was probably 1,800. How sad is this? How sad is it? It's so sad. It's so sad. So, by the way, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Officers, ICE, did you ever hear of ICE? Yesterday, they just endorsed Donald J. Trump, first time they've ever endorsed anybody. And the Border Patrol agents endorsed Trump also. So we have the Border Patrol agents. We have Sheriff Joe. Sheriff Joe. Boy, you talk about a guy who knows about borders. We have the ICE officers. But the Border Patrol, 16,500, they've never endorsed any presidential candidate ever before. The ICE officers have never endorsed, and they're incredible people. They're responsible for all of the interior immigration enforcement of the United States. And they want to do their job, but they're told to stand back. They want to do their job. They're amazing people. They called Hillary Clinton's immigration plan the most radical immigration proposal in United States history. These are the people that know what's happening. We also debated crime. The new FBI statistics show that homicide rose 15 percent last year in America's large cities, and that's the largest single-year increase in 45 years. How are you feeling, folks? Great? I explained that a policy like stop and frisk in Chicago, especially where it's going crazy, could save thousands of lives, just like it saved thousands of lives in New York City under Mayor Giuliani. <laughs> Overwhelmingly, this will save African American and Hispanic lives. Citizens who are entitled to the same protection as every other American. Every other American. You know, I say, when I look at these inner cities and I see how bad they are, the crime is through the roof, the education is horrible, there are no jobs. Black youth, it's what's happening. And remember that Hillary Clinton calls them super predators, right? Super predators. That was her term, super predators. But you look at African-American youth with unemployment rates in the 50s. And I say to people, the poverty is at numbers that you wouldn't believe. And I say, what do you have to lose? I'll fix it. I say this to African-American communities. What do you have to lose? Donald Trump is going to fix it. We're going to fix it. We're going to make it safe.
They can't walk down the street. In many cases, they get shot. They get shot. Their children get shot and killed. And it's so sad. I will fix it. Just give me a chance. I also explained last night that stop and frisk is constitutional. Uh, the MC was arguing with me, taking up a lot of time. In fact, law enforcement conducts stop and frisk in cities every day. You have to do this. You have to do this. In Chicago, 3,000 shootings since January 1st of this year. 3,000. Of course you have to do it. It's based on the Supreme Court ruling Terry versus Ohio from 1968. Improving law enforcement is a matter of life and death and even survival for our country. So I mentioned thousands and thousands of people are being shot in different cities. Chicago being one of the worst. 60% of murder victims under 22 in this country are African Americans. We have to help them, and it is unacceptable. Man just said it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. 6,000 African Americans are victims of homicide in our country every single year. Nine more people, think of it, nine more people were shot in Chicago yesterday. Yesterday. I will never back down. And that's true. Obama's hometown. I will never back down from trying to save American lives. Never. I will never back down from fighting to rebuild our inner cities. How much more violence must there be on our streets before Hillary Clinton abandons her scripted and rehearsed lines and speaks authentically for even one second about the real problems facing our nation. She just wants the votes and then she's gone for four years. She's done an incompetent job. The trouble we have because of her and President Obama, you will not believe. All you have to do is open your eyes. Hillary Clinton has nothing to offer but the same tired defense of the same failed establishment. She's merely a vessel for her friends, the donors, and the special interests. Hillary Clinton's a representative for globalists. You know what globalists are? Who want to strip the jobs and the wealth from our country and give them to every other country. I'm not running to be president of the world. I'm running to be president of you and the United States. Hey, cameras, turn around and show this picture. Turn around. Go ahead. Go ahead, cameras. Turn around. Show this picture. All the way out to the runway. Show this picture, cameras. Show it up in that corner, way high up, cameras. I've dealt with a lot of dishonest people. I would say certain elements of the press are the most dishonest people I've ever dealt with. It's true. Most dishonest. I am for, and so are you, America first. My economic agenda can be summed up in three simple but very beautiful words. Are you ready? Jobs, jobs, jobs. We will cut your taxes and let you deduct the cost of child care. It's about time. We will reduce regulations and create millions of new jobs for our country. We will unleash American energy, adding trillions of new wealth for our workers. We are going to shrink our trade deficit and protect 
American manufacturing, which is being led to slaughter. Being led to slaughter. Florida has lost one in five manufacturing jobs since NAFTA. That's the economic legacy of Bill and Hillary Clinton, folks. The tax, trade, energy, and regulatory reforms I propose will create at least 25 million new jobs over the next 10 years, and that'll happen. Let me tell you what else we're going to do. We're going to repeal and replace the horrible Obamacare. Clinton, on the other hand, wants to expand the Obamacare disaster and put the government completely in charge of America's health care. Two other major reforms I'm proposing are school choice and ending of Common Core. We're going to end Common Core. I want every disadvantaged child in this country including every poor Hispanic child in this country and every poor African-American child in this country to be able to attend the public, private, charter, magnet, or religious school of their choice. It's the great civil rights issue of our time. I will be a voice for freedom that includes freedom for people in Cuba, Cuba is not, it's not right what's going on. It's not right. How many people here are from Cuba? Tell me, raise your hand. Uh, I wanted to mention it, you know, I wouldn't say it's a lot of people, but that's okay. But this afternoon, I spent a lot of time in Little Havana, an amazing place. President Obama made a one-sided deal with the Castros for nothing in return. Did you ever see this guy make a decent deal for this country? And you know what? Crooked Hillary will be worse. She's going to be worse than Obama. Mark my words. She is going to be worse than Obama. And that's why on November 8th, you can't let it happen. And we've got to win Florida. Hey, did you see these characters with the maps? You know, the Electoral College. So about a month ago, they said, oh, it's a very small path for Trump. You know, it's tough. It's tougher as a Republican. But he's going, oh, it is a very small path, very narrow. You lose like two votes and it's over. Then two, three weeks ago, somebody said, oh, this is not good news. This is not good news. The path is getting a little bit wider. Today I'm watching, oh, wow. Now they're looking at all these paths. No, we're doing good, folks. We're going to do something that's never been done before. Never. And we're going to get rid of cricket. I mean, we're going to get rid of that crooked woman. She's a crooked woman. She's a very, very dishonest woman. So it was done by executive order, and I will lift that order unless we get the deal that we want, and that includes protecting the religious and political freedoms of the Cuban people and the release of political prisoners, right? Those who have suffered suppression, is that correct? I think we have to do that, right? You have to ask for it. It's like in the Iran deal, they didn't ask for anything. They just said, we'll take it, we'll take it, we'll take it. And boy, have we emboldened Iran. You see the way they're treating us now? We gave them everything, and they treat us like dirt. Those who have suffered oppression know how precious freedom is, like the people of Cuba and Venezuela. My administration will be a voice against oppression in this hemisphere. Those who have lived in these countries also understand the dangers of corrupt politicians like Hillary Clinton, who use government power for personal profit. Bill and Hillary Clinton were paid $150 million for speeches to special interests since Bill left office. 
Bill Clinton was being paid to give speeches by many of the same people who had matters before the State Department while Hillary was Secretary of State. Clinton donors got favorable treatment and access to the State Department. It's called pay for play. Our Secretary of State can be bought or bribed or whatever you want to call it, or sell trades, government favors, access. And I'll tell you, when that happens, our whole system is threatened, and we have to stop it on November 8th. Remember, when you're going to vote, don't vote for crooked Hillary. Just put it in your head. Crooked Hillary. She is a crooked one. America can never elect a candidate like Clinton who put her public office up for sale. Hillary Clinton tried to cover up her crimes by deleting 33,000 emails after a congressional subpoena and destroying her phones, some of them with a hammer. That's also why she lied repeatedly to Congress and the American people. She said she never sent or received classified materials, a lie. Such a lie. And that lie was proven over and over again. She claimed she used an insecure email for convenience, using only one device. Well, that turned out to be a total lie because she used multiple devices. Under penalty of perjury, she said she turned over all of her work-related email. But the FBI found she never turned over, including the discovery of 15,000 emails she failed to produce. Another crooked Hillary lie. She said she sent or received nothing marked classified. A total lie, and it was unmasked to the world. Our country is so embarrassed at what's just taken place. She said her server was secure, but we now know her server was completely insecure, and the FBI director said it could have been easily hacked. Then her aides took the Fifth Amendment and her ringleaders were given immunity. And if you're not guilty of a crime, what do you need immunity for, right? Have you ever seen anything so corrupt in your life? Have you ever seen a greater embarrassment to our country? The people getting rich off the rig system. The people who want nothing to change, and they don't want anything. They don't want it to change. Are the people throwing their money at Hillary Clinton. She's an insider fighting only for her donors and insiders. I'm an outsider fighting for you. It's time, okay? It's time. Our campaign is about breaking up the special interest monopoly in Washington, D.C. We're trying to disrupt the collusion between the wealthy donors, the large corporations, and the media executives. They're all part of the same corrupt political establishment, all part of it. It's a political establishment that's corrupt. They go home, they go to the same restaurants, they attend the same conferences, right? And they have the same friends and connections. And they nod along when Hillary slanders you by calling you deplorable and irredeemable. You're deplorable. No. See, what she doesn't understand is that you're the greatest people on earth. You're not deplorable. The greatest people on earth you're smart, you're sharp. You really want one thing. You want to make America great again. I mean, it's one thing you want. You want a strong military. You want to take care of your vets. You want to protect your Second Amendment. You want a great home. You want a great family. I mean, look, what are we doing? 
Government will start working for you again. Fixing things is what I do. Just look at my projects in New York and around the world where I've restored neighborhoods and built gleaming properties that have lifted up skylines and revitalized communities all over. We built a great company. We have built a great company. Really great company. Where others see problems, I see potential. That's what I do, and that's what I want to do for our country. I want to go into the neglected neighborhoods, the failing schools, the forgotten stretches of this nation, and unlock their potential for all of our people. So, so much. And the politicians aren't going to do it, folks. All they're going to do, and Hillary in particular, is say, we're going to do this. You'll never see him again. Just think of upstate New York. Just think of the lie that she made to the people of New York State. And it's a disaster. Right now, it's a disaster. And that's many years ago. Together, we can accomplish anything we want. But that means, very importantly, you need to show up and vote on November 8th. You have to knock on doors. You have to pick up your phone and call your friends. You have to campaign on the streets because you know what's going on in this country. A lot of bad things are going on. You have to spread the love that we have in this room to the people of our country. To beat the system, you have to lift up your voice, pound the pavement, and get out to vote. You have to do it. You got to get all your friends. Have to get your friends in. Check out our website. We have 41 days until this election. Can you imagine? I started this on June 16th, coming down the escalator in Trump Tower. And now we're down to 41 days. You remember, we had 17 people, governors and senators. And one by one by one by one, and they said, but Trump has never done this before. They compared my experience to their experience. They had over 200 years experience. I had like three months. But that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. We have 41 days to make our country great again, to represent the world, because I will tell you, our country is being laughed at by the world. It's being laughed at by the world. Remember that. We have 41 days to make possible every dream you've ever dreamed for your country. You have one magnificent chance, and in my opinion, our last chance. It's never going to happen. What we have done with this movement, many, many of the pundits, Bill O'Reilly, many others, have said it's the single greatest phenomena they have seen in their political lives. They've never seen anything like it. The single greatest. We don't want to blow it on November 8th. We have one magnificent chance to deliver justice for every forgotten man, woman, and child in this nation. The arrogance of Washington, D.C. will soon come face to face with the righteous verdict of the American voter. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. This November, we're going to show the whole world that America is back bigger and better and stronger than ever before. See that plane? See that plane? That plane was built in America. Now, now that same company is going to start building these planes in China. I don't like it. I don't like that, Bob. I see a lot of bad things happening there. Here is just some of what will happen starting January of 2017. I am going to lower your taxes by a lot. And Hillary is going to raise your taxes by a lot. Just check out her website. I'm going to eliminate every unnecessary and costly regulation. We're going to repeal and replace Obamacare. 
We're going to unleash American energy. We're going to end illegal and very dangerous immigration. We're going to keep radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country, okay? We're going to save your Second Amendment. The NRA endorsed me, their earliest endorsement. I'm very honored. We are going to support the men and women of law enforcement. And we're going to appoint justices to the Supreme Court who will uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. We will rebuild our roads, our bridges, our tunnels, highways, airports, schools, hospitals. We will rebuild our country, and we're going to put a lot of people to work. American cars will again travel the roads. American planes will soar the skies, and American ships will patrol our seas. American steel will send skyscrapers into the clouds. American hands will rebuild this nation, and American energy harvested from American sources will power our nation. And that means our miners. That means our miners. American workers will be hired to do the job. We will put new American steel into the spine of this country. I will fight for every neglected part of this nation. And I will fight to bring us together as Americans. With our incredible people, imagine what our country could accomplish if we started working together as one people under one God, saluting one American flag. It's time to break with the bitter failures of the past and to embrace a new, inclusive, and prosperous American future. We have such potential. To every parent who dreams for their children and to every child who dreams for their future, I say these words to you. I am with you, I will fight for you, and I will win for you. Our country will start winning again. Once more, we will have a government of, by, and for the people. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And yes, we will make America great.